Well, this day has finally come, and it's been like a month since I made a video about Hell of a Boss. But this time, we're gonna talk about the Haspen Hotel. And I know I said the show is pretty entertaining, but I also said it's pretty shocking, and I didn't get the chance to tell you why. But before I get into this, this show is required of mature themes. And also an SA issues that everyone in the media has been, you know, talking about. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. We're here to talk about the plot of the show. Because the show was unexpectedly disappointed. Why? Well, it's because Haspen Hotel lacks rehability. But before I get to it, if you don't want to maintain spoilers, I recommend you watch it now. Only if you're 18 years or older. Because, like I said, mature themes. Now that we got that all cleared up, let's move ahead. The musical is not bad, all catchy, but if I'm gonna have to pick a favorite, those are my four main things. I love the color palette, the design is cool, and the web animation is always great. My biggest issue of the show is that the whole direction of the plot has been mixed up that is hard to understand and why it doesn't make sense. I'll explain every episode, but I'm gonna have to hold on episode 1 and 3, just until I get to episode 5. You'll see why. For episode 2, Radio Killed the Video Star. This episode is about our three overlords, the Vives. Fox finding out that Alistair is back and trying to send a warning to him, but it backfired. And the V's having a discussion on how to try to take down the whole hotel. And they do that by sending someone who can spy on them. And that is Serpentius. Who is a mad inventor who caused trouble towards the hotel. But then pretended to come in peace just to sneak up inside the hotel for the V's. Until he was caught and then he was trying to get back up from the V's. But then they shut him out for his failure. Charlie gave him a chance to make a fresh start, and so they did. The most interesting about the episode 2 is that introduction of the Vives, as well as Serpentius. And I also enjoyed the argument song between Alistair and Vox. And I also loved this I Starts With Sorry song. It's very touching. The episode is good, but there's some... Um, issues on the episode I have as well and she could explain it better uh, well I'll let her explain it yeah Charlie is almost completely oblivious to Angel Dust emotions almost as if she can't understand him Charlie consistently puts Angel Dust in positions that make him extremely uncomfortable even though she is trying to help him quote unquote get redeemed why wouldn't she at some point take him aside and just ask him what's wrong I mean we quite literally see a scene in which Charlie writes Angel Dust as the villain and Angel Dust walks off as if he doesn't want to be a part of it anymore and Charlie just doesn't care now I understand these scenes they're supposed to be played off as comedy but when you're really looking at Charlie here, isn't she being a little too oblivious? And you know what truly grinded my gears this episode is the fact that Charlie sings this entire song about apologizing and truly meaning it, and yet never had a conversation with Angel Dust in which she kind of apologized for a lot of her actions. And I'm not being nitpicky here, this is something that is brought up in another episode in the series. And Charlie having this lack of empathy or emotional intelligence is something that's really prominent in the entire series. And I had to agree. Because of that moment, Charlie should have been concerned about Angel about what's bothering him. Episode 4, Masquerade. And this episode contains S.A., like I said, the warning. This one here is about Angel Does, who is um, <clears throat> an adult star. Walk out of the hotel to do some other business for the V's. Well, one of the V's, and that is Volatino. Who gives Angel a hard time and trauma caused by his sexual abusement? And Charlie gets really furious when, when she's his witness. But then Angel told Charlie to leave because she only making things worse, even though she's only trying to help Angel. Angel and Hus got in some argument. But then Angel explained why he's the way he is and what he needs to be to escape something that he hates. 
the trauma of Valentino that caused him. But then Hoss convinced Angel about his own misery, of his past of the afterlife, to let him know that they're not alone. And I think it's pretty good. Episode 5, Dad Be Dad, Charlie's struggling to ask Dad for help, and her dad is Lucifer. Yeah, the devil. Because he let the extermination happen. To help her for the hotel, while the new arrival characters show up out of nowhere, Lucifer and the Haspin crew introduce each other, and Charlie and Veggie showing him the tour. And he just didn't think it would work, because sinners are psychopaths. And he also says heaven won't listen. But then Charlie and her father have a musical, and then Lucifer willing to give Charlie a shot meeting with the heavens. The episode is not bad. But the thing is about Lucifer, I am soon he'll be funny, but I always thought he'll be Tywin. Hint of vibe like King Triton or King Neptune. Because when I see Hell of a Ball's main character's fathers, who also are abusive, I always thought Lucifer will, will be like that. I wouldn't mind he could be goofy, but for someone who is a ruler of hell, they sure made him cheerful. Now to episode 1, Overture. Charlie starts off telling the story about Lucifer and Lilith along with Adam and Eve. Lucifer has his idealistic creative ideas, but it was scolded by the elders of heaven because of his behavior, and Adam trying to control towards Lilith, but she refuses. Lucifer and Lilith met and fought to love each other. Heaven grants Adam a new bride named Eve. Lucifer and Lilith came to Eve to share a gift of free will to humanity. But then consequences happened when evil came to the world. Lucifer and Lilith are banished from heaven for their recklessness. And then angels sent the exterminator to make sure that demons never rise above. And after the backstory, we've been introduced to Haspen Hotel crews who are planning to make a, a commercial for a Haspen Hotel. But then Lucifer called, calling about the meaning of angels. And Charlie started to have a musical moment. After that, Charlie headed to the meeting to meet up with the angels, Adam and Lute, who is complete douche and merciless. They trying to introduce each other, but then Adam tried some obnoxious pranks. Charlie trying to explain the plan about the redemption that they're still gonna exterminate sinners. So Charlie's meeting's been a buzz. The hotel crew finished the commercial. They're planning on watching it together, but then it's interrupted by the news. That the exterminations changed the date to six months because of the dead body of the exorcist. But before I go into the next one, I want to talk about the angels that had me at dead pen. And, oh boy, where should I start? Let's start off Adam, who is a commander of the extermination. He was the first original man who wants to take control and somehow become an angel. He's obnoxious, sexist, and annoying, who just killed sinners for entertainment along with his lieutenant, Lute, who is cruel, ruthless killing machine. Like, seriously, how did they accomplish in heaven? For Adam, I always thought he could be like a, as a manipulator, but suave. And as for Lute, I always thought she could be like calm and unemotional. Turns out there are heavenly butchers. Now to episode three, Scramble Eggs. Becky insists to get rid of the eggs to help, you know, serpents to improve as a person. So she sent Alistair to send them off. While doing that, he went into Central, an ancient overlord who invited him to overlord meeting. And during the meeting, Velvet shows up and shot the head of the extermination angel. And suggesting to go to war with the heavens. But then they shut the idea down because it will lead to, you know, to death between hell and heaven. Because they believe it will lead to more deaths. 
Carmelia and Verlet have a musical argument. So Camellia called out the meaning. Alistair sent one of the eggs to spy on them. And Carmelia reveals that she killed the exterminators to protect her daughters. So the egg told Alistair about the secret about the deaths of the exterminators. They head back to the hotel and they decide to keep the eggs for their usefulness. So Sir Precious and the Egg Boys united. And my thoughts on the episode, the musical is not bad. Could have put that with Spellers on the list. But for a question about Camellia, if she doesn't want to resort to violence and avoid going to war, and I get that she making all the angelic weapons in order to protect herself and her daughters, I get that. But what I don't understand is that why selling the weapons? Because for one, they could have just keep them to themselves and let the other demons find the weapon. Well, whatever. But the main issue about it is that when she reveals that she's the one who killed the exterminus or exorcist, exterminators, whatever you want to call it, it just completely ruined the mystery vibe for me. Just wish they could have planned it out better, but either way, let's get to Episode 6, Welcome to Heaven. Charlie and Veggie has been invited to the heavenly journey from Sarah and Emily. The Seraphim. But before the trial, Adam and Lude confront Veggie to sabotage the trial, but she won't accept it. So the trial begins by watching Angel Dust and the has been hotel crews along with Cherry Bomb, where they went to the nightclub. And during the nightclub, Angel does save Nitty by standing up to Valentino, which Charlie claims to prove that Angel does is redeemable. But then the angels doesn't know how the souls get into heaven. And while they get into the argument of the case, Adam accidentally revealed about the extermination plan causing Emily to distrust Sarah because Sarah knew about the extermination plan and she didn't tell her. But then Adam revealed to Charlie about Veggie's past that she is an also an exterminator. The angels find no evidence that the sinner can be redeemed, so Adam sends Charlie and Veggie back. My two favorite part about this episode is it's where Angel Dust finally sticking up for his friends and by standing up to Valentino. And, and the fact that Veggie is a fallen angel, which is brilliant. Episode 7, Hello Wolsey. After Charlie and Veggie been kicked out, out of heaven, Alistair take advantage of Charlie's bad day, convincing her to make a deal for unknown favor. Then he tells Charlie how to kill the exterminator angels that Camilla knows how. So Charlie tells Veg to convince Camilla to help her, while Charlie and Alistair go to the Cannibal Town to meet Rosie, who wants Cannibal Town. And Rosie and the Cannibals eventually agree to help fight off the angels. But then Rosie convinced Charlie that Veggie is being redeemed through the hotel. Meanwhile, Camilla teaching Vaggie how to fight off angels and showing her that they could be killed by the angelic weapons. So Vaggie will gain her rings and Cornelia agreed to help by supplying with angelic weapons. Charlie and Vaggie hug it out, then enter the hotel only to find the staff preparing themselves for the battle with the angels. There's not much I had to say about this episode other than Vecky because... Did you know angels could be harmed? No. Stupid girl, are you really so dense you don't realize you're holding the answer? Angelic weapons? It's that simple? How has no one else figured this out? How did you not figure this out? <laughs> and finally, season 1, episode 8, the show must go on. While the hotel is reinforcing, Charlie worried that she'll lead to everyone's death, but then Vaggie convinced her to believe in herself. When the extermination arrive, 
The battle continues between sinners and angels. Alistair have a fight with Adam, but then badly injured and forcing to flee. Sir Precious is ready to defeat Adam, but then fell to his death. So Charlie goes into her demon form to face Adam while Vaggy going face to face with Loot. Vaggy barely defeat Loot and spare her, but then Loot escape, tearing her arm off to attack Vaggy. Lucifer came out of nowhere to help Charlie from Adam, and then Nifty sneak kills Adam. So Loot and the angels fleet it. And Charlie and Lucifer and the hotel crew, we built a hotel for the greater stage. Thieves plan trying to take over hell. Alistair hope for freedom and trying to control over hell. And after the game having a musical finale, Sir Pensions have been ascend and Little has been in heaven the whole time. And the rest is history. Now that I got all the episodes straight out of season one, I'm gonna share my opinions the part of the show where it doesn't make sense to me. My issue is that when Charlie tells a story about how it all happens, there's this one line that got me on the edge. An extermination to ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. Which I understand from the pilot is that the reason for the extermination is to control overpopulation in Peregrine City. But from the actual show, the real reason for the extermination is to keep them from hell or sinners rising against them. So they exterminate everyone in Peregrine City except one thing. Lucifer gave permission to spare a hellborn and only target the sinners or overlords. I think for that reason, maybe, is to protect Charlie. But the only thing I hear from him is... Oh, but these sinners? You know, they're just the worst. Our people, Charlie, are awful! They got gifted free will and look what they did with it! Everything's terrible! <laughs> Sinners are violent psychopaths, hell-bent on causing as much pain and destruction as they can. Yeah, well, hate to break it to ya. <laughs> and not to mention what the other line... Evil finally found its way into Earth. With it, a new realm of darkness and sin and the order heaven had worked to maintain was shattered. They also invade Earth and kill people to got them down here in the first place. And my second issue in heaven, we experience that Angel swears. Oh! Uh, we don't have hard days, it's heaven. You seriously gonna sit there and pretend like this behavior is okay? And, and when Charlie swears, they bully act shocked. I mean, <laughs> thank you. But you want to know the worst part? Angels don't make mistakes. You really think that? I know that. Yeah, I've never made a mistake in my life. What a load of bullshit. You'll love it. Uh, thanks. Like you has no place in heaven. I wanted to save you the anguish it takes to do what was required. Talk about a hypocritical. This is proves that heaven is just corrupted. And remember I said why I was disappointed because the show lacks rehabilitation? I'm also disappointed of Charlie's role of character. Because for someone who wants to rehabilitate sinners, she sure doesn't understand the scope of their struggles because she doesn't bother to ask or learn about the past. Which is kind of the whole point of the plot show. Because not only we want to learn about the characters' hangouts, but we also want to know the characters' death of their former lives for what leads them to hell from their own actions. And yet, we've been watched where Charlie trying to make a connection with the heavens, 
that we didn't even see that Charlie was off everybody's issue. The character I see who gives unmotivated pep talks is Hux and Wozy. But what's odd is when Hasbin Hotel now knew that heaven is just a morally injustice, they were built on a hotel to make a fresh start. And it got me thinking, what's the point now that they find out that this whole plan has been a bust? Is it to make another redemption plan or just make the world a better place? It's everyone's guess. Hopefully the second one. What I'm trying to say is, after rewatching every episode of season 1, trying to figure out what's the issues for the show, is that maybe it's that we don't got much development of every character's, and it doesn't focus on the therapy plot of the for the hotel of the show, because we've been skipped ahead, and it felt way too soon in my opinion. And it's because of the pacing problem. And they could have put a little bit more time on each episode to work out and live their expectation, but they don't. But I'm guessing they're pacing so much of this show is because Amazon is working with the other shows like The Boys and, and The Invincible. I think that's the reason. So I can't exactly point fingers whose fault it was. But then again, when this show had this many writers, they're not putting that much effort to it. I don't want any stand <clears throat> fandoms changed me down for speaking out of the show, but hey, what things to be told needs to be told. Because just because the show is a hit doesn't make it flawless. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy who's ranting about Spindahor's questionable decisions. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I'm concerned of what they'll do next on season 2. Because Based on what we've seen on every episode of season 1, it's not a great start. And if I'm gonna give this show a rating, then I'll probably give it 6 out of 10 or 3 out of 5. Well anyway, what do you guys think? Leave a comment to share what are your opinions. I'm Cop 5 and I'll see you later.